Now, our dear Heavenly Father, the Lord, our city councilors come together to speak to take care of the necessary affairs of our city, to enact those regulations, to uh, establish the cost of operating our city and to designate the expenditures which are required. We thank thee for the services of the past, for we depend upon that which is being done to sustain our necessities, our comforts, O oh Lord, and our desires relative to the services which is being provided. And we desire that all the, the, the negotiations which are being considered this evening might be for the welfare and the benefit of all concerned. And that there may be agreement and as well as consideration and discussion over the affairs which will be brought forth. And we trust that the very best recommendations which will be enacted shall come forth. And this we ask in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Are there any additions to the agenda? Ma'am? Yes. Could I be moving to the front of the agenda so that will call me? Yeah. Should be behind you, Bill. Go ahead, Go ahead. Okay, we've had uh, several people, I know I have, Steph's running a cheerleader outfit for fireworks as well, for fundraisers. Uh, about nine out of every ten people that come to the stand don't know what the times are at this point because they ask us, when can we pop firecrackers? When we tell them, they get upset. Well, that's a bunch of bull. So I told them all we can do is go to city council, see if we can fix it, make it a little more I think I can speak for Steph when I say we're not going to benefit from this. They're going to come by fireworks whether you guys let them pop one day or ten days. So it's not really going to benefit us. But I think it's going to benefit you overall because the officers, the dispatchers are going to go through heck the next few days with all the calls if you leave it on just the one day. They've got the stuff, they're going to pop them. 
I realize that some of the older people don't want it. They just want the one day. But I think you've got just as many younger people that do want to do it more than one day. I stepped up and told some of my customers, I'll go see what I can get done about this. I'll see if we can get it extended or something. It don't matter to me which way you guys go. I'm just kind of standing in for the citizens at this point. Thank you. Does the council wish to reconsider? I had two people contact me, and they were thankful we were only doing it one day. That's certain people contact me with the same message, so it's up to council. If you guys would like to revisit it and extend it, you have that option. If you would like to leave it the way it is, I haven't had any, any comments at all. Uh, it's totally up to you guys. It makes no difference to me what we did. Um, either way. I haven't had anybody contact me either. But I don't know why I couldn't go an extra day into that Saturday. But we're just allowing from Friday morning to 1 or midnight, whatever it is. So maybe up to. It's already been in the paper, right? Dark or whatever. What, what was the paper? Perry? No, I just put down the one day only okay. in the paper, but I can fix that. The internet. Did you put the times? More people do my internet than my paper, so I can fix that. Perry, did you put the times in there? Yep. I mean, I'm not saying we have to go to Saturday, or I mean, Saturday night to midnight or one o'clock. Well, Again, we'll, it's up to you guys if someone wants to make a motion to extend it. We can do that. Um, if nobody wants to make a motion, then we'll leave it as it is. I make a motion to extend it then to Saturday to, say, 10 o'clock in the evening, from like 8 to 10 on Saturday. So we'll start at 7 in the morning and go until 10 o'clock that night? Yep. Yeah. I mean, that way, for the people that don't want it, we end it early. Like you said, I'm sure they're going to pop them anyway. So, I mean, during the day. So. 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock on Saturday. Yeah, or 7 in the morning, whatever you want to do, I don't care. They need a specific motion. Then let's go from 8 to 10 Saturday. And from 7 to 1. Whatever it was before. Yeah. The only concern that I would have is I we have been told that people have boarded their animals. They checked ahead of time so they knew how long to board their animals. Um, I guess we can make specific phone calls to people that we know are doing that, but I don't know that we get everybody. Hmm. Yeah, it has been a big issue in the past. Well, we, 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 have, we always have the last two days. We have a lot ever since I've been on the council we go out two days. Yeah. The only reason we started it was because of the rain today, but I think it needs to be done like you guys did the week before or two weeks before. Get it set and get it in the paper. Okay, well I have a motion on the table at this point. Is there a second? Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, Bob, I didn't see him one way or the other. I, I don't care. <laughs> you have to vote one way or the other. No, I, I don't care which way it goes. But we're going to vote on it. I'm seconded. You guys can decide. No, the mayor breaks the tie. So you're voting no. yes then? I'm not voting. <laughs> well then, that, that's a no vote. Okay, we will stick with the original times. Okay. okay. Thank you for Thank being you. consideration. You're welcome. <laughs> Consent agenda. Approved minutes for regular meeting 617-2014. Approved appropriation records 07-01-2014 in the amount of 
of Warren Brothers uh, in reference to the uh, cost for the pound, we did adjust the uh, invoice instead of having, he had on their listed that there was three guys that came to take off the doors and there's only two. So the final figure on that, uh, which I would like approval, would be $1,472.93. And that was strictly for pulling the doors off sandblasting and putting them back on? No, here's the... That was pulling them off, sandblasting them, putting the coating, whatever, I don't know what they call a coating. I mean, it's, it's a several step process from what I can see. And then, of course, putting them back on. And that's the same thing I gave you last council, just as the adjustment of the third person taking on there.
call the guys who seen the, the information on that. And uh, the property owner had 15 days to request a hearing before the council. And uh, I guess he wasn't able to come. He thought he might have to work. So he uh, wrote, a, wrote a letter. To the governing body of the city of St. John, I, Carl Hall, request 15 to 20 days to alleviate the exterior conditions of my yard at 209 South Monroe. I would also like to request three months to alleviate the exterior structure violations at 209 South Monroe. I appreciate your consideration in this matter as I work in the agricultural, agricultural field and this is the busiest time of my work here. Sincerely, Carl Hall. So, he's asking for 20 days to clean up his yard and three months to get the structure violations taken care of.
15 motion, then one goes 15, then one goes 15. Remains as it is right now. Is that 45 start after the 15, or does that start, both of them start at the exact same time? I would have a problem making a motion extending the 45 days to 60 and leaving the 20, 20. Well, it's 15 put a date right on. now, right? You'd ask for 15 or 20, but you, know, if you want to get more than 20. So. Put, put a deadline date on it. I need to know exactly what day it becomes the code is up. Okay, so 60 days from today will be the next of this month, so August 29th. You might want to check my math. And then what happens? Well, the ordinance calls for legal, I mean, we can be signed and taken to court. And then if nothing's done, we can either fix it or... He does not, I do know that he does not want to tour it. I made that offer to him you know, as far as you know, the city you know, He does not want to tour it. He wants to save the property. There, there won't be any more extensions. I agree with that. So the motion is to extend the yard cleanup from 15 to 20 days, the exterior structure violations from 45 to 60 days. Without any more extensions? No motion for extension. And it'll also have to be, it's fixed up the compliance where we can do it. I don't, she didn't really give me the final figure, but it is, yeah, substantially less than, than, uh, what, what, uh. If you could follow up with whoever, over in Stafford. She, John has been in contact yeah, with her, I, too. I, I talked to him, and they emailed me there. I was over there today and kind of looked into it, but she said that her and John had been in contact, so. They did combine some stuff too, I know, because they're going to do a bunch of pole rebuild and they did it all on bond. Okay. But but she does have, I think she does have the figures for just a meter. She gave us um, their figures for the pole rebuild. Yeah. So that would be the total they're going to have to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're not starting to read yet. No, they're still in the changing process. And the city staff doing it or something? The city's like doing it, yeah. The city's doing it. Would there be a possibility that we could go in with them and get, get the same discount? Well, the discount's available to anybody. I mean, the, the cost is the same. I've been buying radio read meters for quite a while. So the ones that we buy now are all all set up to do this, um, as far as the electric side. If we bought some with them, I wonder if we could get a better. They're price. all the, no, it's the same price, same price. I 
I got an offer from them the same way that that Stafford did, and uh, and basically the residential meters cost fifty dollars and fifty cents. Whether you buy a radio read or a non-radio read, they're the same price. The same way with the seven terminal, thirteen terminal, three phase meters, they're two hundred fifty dollars. That's programmed and ready to go. So. How many meters do we already have set up? Like that? Oh, I had that wrote down last time, and I think I think there's. There's 168 commercial, no, yeah, 168 commercial meters, I believe, that are three-phase meters, and right at 700 residential. I had that, and I apologize. I had it here last time, and then after after the other guy got done, why, uh, Julianne had said something about having a discussion sitting around the table with the mayor, so... I took that stuff back and put it on my desk. I don't have it, but basically, I'm not hold you basically up. sixty grand to do the electric side. No, I mean you said you've already put it. all the meters you put. Oh, in. that I put in? Yeah. How oh, many meters do we already have? That's twenty, ready maybe. To read? Twenty. Yeah, not very many. And that's all residential. Uh, no, there's a couple of commercial meters in there too. But basically, we're starting from scratch. So you say we already got twenty though? Yeah, maybe twenty. Residential and two commercial. Maybe two commercial. Yeah. I never keep more than two, two uh, three-phase meters at a time. Two of a seven terminal, which is a a, a non-ratio uh, read meter, and then a thirteen terminal, which is a, for a higher load ratio type meter. I keep two of each of those on stock all the time for change outs and dead meters, stuff like that. But but I don't buy large quantities. I usually buy my residential meters four to a box. I usually buy two boxes at a time. So. But we'd like to spend whatever the budget is, you know, to keep going and purchasing these and change them out as we go. I mean, as far as the money will allow us to go until until the council makes a decision on what they want to do. And I budgeted some money for next year because I didn't I didn't know, and John and I discussed it, we didn't know how far the council wanted to go this year or whether they wanted to look at it in the future or do so many a year for the next few years to get up to do them all. Uh, there is a... There is a fairly sizable discount at this time with uh, and I and like I say I don't have the actual numbers but if you if you purchase a, a, a deal that they have set up right now you get 240 residential meters in the radio read or the uh, uh, drive-by read uh, system as a package thrown in for free as you buy them and then and then you're Sequential meters after that will cost you 50 50 for residential, 250 for commercial. And, uh, and then the software cost and, and that stuff. But basically, from what I figured out, pretty close to about 60,000, we'll, we'll do all the electric meters, everything on the system. If you buy 240, you said you just basically get the hand deal deal? You get the drive by. You get the drive by, the, the computer that goes in the pickup. Okay. It's but about twenty thousand dollars for the first two hundred and forty and the and the drive by. And then the other meters come in at fifty dollars and fifty cents and two hundred and fifty respectively. Plus we have to get the software from this. And side. then the software is about three thousand dollars in the training and, and that stuff. How much money would we say doing this? Well it's hard to say. You know, we like I tell everybody else, uh, meters are like people. The older they get, the slower they get. So you're going to you're going to see some uh, increase in revenue. How much we don't know. It will also tell you if that meter fails. It will tell you when you read it whether that that meter has failed and at what time it's failed. You know that you have those kind of options too. So, and we since I've come back to work, we've gone back. When I left, we we had kind of a ritual that we went through in the summertime of checking the load on our on our transformer banks and what our metering was doing and that stuff and, and as far as our, our current rated meters because they're the ones that you lose the most revenue the fastest on the larger the larger users and we we inspect them on a regular basis and we we take demand readings off of them so we know how heavy loaded our transformer banks are so but uh, that's basically a change out price is about give or take a little bit about sixty thousand so for my side but I you know males will be it will be more than that, I'm sure. Yeah. She said probably. She said probably 30 percent more, is what she said. So, <clears throat> but they're changing all. theirs brand new. They're not. They're not retrofitting any heads with their old meters or anything. 
and and their counterpart is Salina Supply. They're the they're the the Itron partner in the state for for the water meters. So and that's who they're dealing with there too. So. Is the same handheld unit that reads the electric meter as the water yes. meter? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do they have to do two sweeps or they, can they go They'll read them all at one. They're them. just like Kyle had said before, you know, when you drive by them, they'll read them. They'll read both of them. They all have a have a distinct code on them and, and they have a distinct code on the meter that we write down when we put these in now that has a regular radio signal for them. So. Okay, is, uh, is the electric meters that's already radio uh, uh, computer activated, is there a water meter on that property? Well, now that I can't tell you. I don't know. Mail? Because I can't tell you exactly where I put them in. I don't know where all they've got them. Yeah. Maybe we just change them out. As we change out a dead meter, we just put them in. We put in a new electronic radio read meter is what we do. And I'm responsible for mine. Mel's responsible for his. Well, I, would, so. I would think maybe if, we might ought to, if we're going to do one electronic, it should be the new water meter too. Well, we just do them as, as the meter dies. You know, so that's 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 not very cost effective for him to go change a meter that that might still be producing. You know, without just because I change an electric meter that's not producing on a house that might be generating sixty dollars a month. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. We need to decide who we're going with. I mean, you know, if I've been changing out all the meters all along, thinking this was coming, and then we end up going with another company, we, you know, once we decide what we need to go with. Do it, then we can you know, get, get the prices and go with it that way. I think we need a commitment to that's what we're going to do. Get their program. So, I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, and, and what, what the city is wanting, are we wanting to go with the drive by? I mean, that seems like a, you know, what Kyle presented, a, a reasonable thing that someday if you want to upgrade to a single tire or do away with that, but that's to me the first step, the most logical step. And I think that's the way Stafford's looking too, is that they're going to do the drive-by and eventually graduate up to a tower type system, you know, which costs more money. I mean, everything that you do to add, a, you have the basic system and everything you add on after that, then you step up the, the usage of that, but you step up the expense of what you invest too. So, But the drive-by is uh, 100 times better than what we're doing now and it's 100% more accurate. I mean, there are no, there's no mistakes between the meter reader or how they get figured in the book or any of that. Well, so you don't have to worry about it. is there a dog out there? We can't get sure, to the meter. Sure, exactly. We have to have people call in their meters. Yeah, is and we do. Meter? We have people that call them in now because they won't let us in. You know, I mean. And that's, then once a year, we have to at least. Yeah, you know, I mean, it it is a real problem when. And in the winter, when it's cold and the snow's on the ground, you don't get to read the water meters. You know that type of stuff. I mean, there's there's consequences, and then you. And then you average your sewer charge from January, February, March, and who knows what the usage is. You know, if you have a big leak and your water charges up during that time, you'll never see it until spring. A lot of times if you can't read, if there's snow on the ground. What about in bookkeeping? Would you say quite a bit of labor there? Um, if it works like it says it will, yeah. It'll take a while, but... But right now, you know, when the meter, when, when they go out and read the meters, they come in and every single meter that's out there, both on the the water and the electric, we subtract the new reading or the old reading from the new reading and write in what the usage was. Then that has to all be entered into the computer before we can produce the bills. So it's better than it was 30 years ago, but it's, we're, when, I'm at places and we talk about stuff, I listen, and there's not too many that are doing it like we are anymore. But it's what we've been able to do, so. What, if you just did like 240 meters to get that reader, mm -hmm. how much does that cost? 20,000, give or take a little. Okay, and then is this progress, is the technology progressing so fast that if a guy did a, say we committed to doing 240 a year, is no, it progressing I progressing so fast that by year three you'd be out? No, no, I don't think so. I think anything you do now is upgradable from now on, from the systems that are out there. Everybody, some of these systems have been out ten years, maybe longer. Kansas Gas has been reading with Itron for twenty years, close to twenty years, and have gone from handhelds to drive-bys now. But I can remember when Kurt first came here, 
he walked with a with a hand eye drawn and read them that way. And so the software has just developed, you know, better and better as time has come on. Right. You're still you still can use the basic system. Yeah, they're not gonna I don't think they'll ever graduate it to the point that you know, they might twenty years from now, but I, I think the way that things are going, they just keep progressing with newer style meters and that stuff, but they're still all work under the basic principle of the software that's involved. Now you can graduate this from simple reading onto uh, control and light circuits. Can, you, you, can buy, you can buy street lights that will flash in the case of a tornado. I mean you, you can make these things do whatever you want them to do. It's just a matter of the simple program itself. You know, I, I don't think in a three year time, I think if it was a deal in a three year time I don't think anybody would do it. Because that's the way Stafford had originally looked at doing it, and that's the way they budgeted for it was over three years. But then they had such they have such bad lines that they they went ahead and lumped in right. uh, a lot of pole building in on top of their meter reading and are going to do it all under one lump sum. So no, to answer your question, I, I think the software is here to stay. I don't so think it's going to change. To get 240 meters to work, we'd be looking at roughly you said the 20 grand. And then roughly three thousand for the software. Yeah, and I, then you'd be able to read two hundred and forty meters, which is about a third of the electric yeah. meters. Right. Yeah, you'd be I, able to read a third of them that way. Uh huh. I would say that doing it half and half in here is going to be really tough. It's going to be very. Yeah. I just can't see it being an easy transition that way. I mean, if that's what you choose to do, we'll make it work, but it may actually cause more work for a little while until you get it all turned over, because you're going to have some one way, there'll be two processes going on all the time. How long would it take you to switch out 240 meters? Oh, we could have done by fall, I think, you know, along with our other work. I think we could change out so many months. And and uh, I think before winter we can have to change that. How much is it? How much would it, do they have the same deal on the water meters? I don't know. If you buy 240 of them, I, I don't think I don't think they're sold that way. I'll be glad to contact them or Mel can, you know, and we'll find out. But I, I if, you know, we just need to. If that's what we're going to go with the drive by, I can get some prices on on the badger meters. That's what they're using over in Stafford for so on supply. And if we were to say, do 240 meters, how long would it take you guys to switch it up? That would be a, probably a lot longer process. Yeah, it's a whole lot tougher for him than it is now. Uh, if you have trouble with the shut off, you're going to be doing it. I think Kyle kind of related that to me here. He said something I did. There are going to be some of them that are real easy that's got the new style setters in them. They the old style shut offs. Sometimes you know you have to redo the service while you're there. So how long does it take to redo the service? Worst case scenario. For a week. You do about one a day. You have to, you know, as far as if you have to renew the line to the to the main. If it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes we just dig them up and they got a copper line and cut them off and put a new shell on. But it also depends on whether it's a three quarter meter or a two inch meter too. Yeah, that's a
normally I would do this, but under the circumstances, I think that it's best that it be read in open session. Uh, dear Mr. Lyons, we represent Steve and Jenny Jones in connection with various matters. They have brought to our attention a recent situation with regard to the city's handling of the Oliveira property. Needless to say, they are not pleased with how the city has conducted itself in this regard. Because of a citizen complaint, because because of a citizen complaint to the district attorney in Sedgwick County as to how the city of Garner, which this firm represents, initiates executive sessions, I was reminded of the requirements of the Kansas Open Meeting Acts, KSA 75-4317 in sequence, hereafter referred to as COMA. After pursuing the available information on how the city of St. John conducts its business, I have serious concerns that the statutory requirement that city business be conducted in open meetings is routinely ignored by the city of St. John. For example, a review of the minutes of the city council failed to show that there was any public discussion of the city's role in demolition of the buildings on the Oliveira property. And there does not appear to be any recorded vote authorizing the city, the city to enter into the unusual contract to demolish this property on behalf of the property owner. Certainly, a public discussion of the city's role in this transaction could have placed all interested citizens on equal bargaining footing in regard to the potential acquisition of the cleared property and would have avoided the clear appearance of impropriety that resulted when the property was acquired by secret treaty by a council member who was one of the few citizens in the city who had knowledge of the city's role with regards to this property. The impression given by the city council is that the business of the city is a matter of concern only to a few elected officials in the city. Why else would Mr. Davis have asked Jenny not to talk about his interest in the property until his acquisition of the property was accomplished? This attitude is the antithesis of the principles underlying coma. As you know, there are only very few topics that can appropriately be handled in executive session. If the minute, minutes of the meeting that are posted online are accurate, it appears that St. John is handling most of its affairs in executive session, with few substantive items carried out in open meeting. Moreover, the motions to adjourn to executive session are woefully lacking in detail to give any person notice of both, one, the justification for going into executive session, and two, the subjects to be discussed in executive session as required by KSA 75-4319. I recommend that the city acquire and start following the Kansas Open Meetings Act manual published by the League of Kansas Municipalities. Moreover, as you know, it is not permissible to take binding action in an executive session. At some point in the course of some executive session dealing with the Oliveira property, authority must have been granted to the city superintendent to enter into the unusual arrangement with the Oliveras on behalf of the city. If that authority was given, it was not. It is not reflected in the minutes. Steve and Jenny Jones desire that St. John adopt a more open and inclusive approach to governing. Adhering to the minimum minimum requirements of Como would appear to be the first place to start. Instead of bringing these concerns to the Attorney General, as permitted by KSA 754320B, and subjecting the city to thousands of dollars in costs that an investigation of the violations would entail not to mention the fines or other rem remedies that could be imposed. Steve and Jenny request you inform the City Council of the deficiencies in the City's practices in complying with COMA and that at some point in the near future you undertake to present the Council with a refresher course on how to conduct business in compliance with that Act. Uh, you may want to consider contacting the Kansas League of Municipalities to retain an outside expert to present this topic to the Council. Unless Steve and Jenny see that there is a willingness on the part of the city to reform its practices, they will take these concerns to the county attorney and to the attorney general. Your attention to this matter is appreciated. Sincerely, Robert W. Coy Kendall. I think that's how that's pronounced. So, we will be arranging for the league to come in and do a session for us on open meetings and executive sessions just as a refresher course for all of us. Um, is there any comment, any discussion? Mel, do you remember when that, when that actually took place? You told the council told 
rod to draw that up in the agreement between the city and Jeff Oliver, council instructed. And I think that was in open session. I don't think that was private. I, I remember. I'd have to go back and review the videotapes. If we could, if we could find that out. Their resolution, paper. you know, your resolutions were done in a good meeting and then there was put in the paper concerning the property. I may be confused a little bit. Then is our, not, our minutes not represent that then? The resolutions, yes. Well, I mean, why are they saying it's not representative right now? I mean, if they're reviewing our minutes, but can't figure out what was done. Yeah, there may be other decisions that I'm not aware of, but... I think it, we ought to find that, what that meeting that was talked about, to see exactly what did go on. Can we hear that, if we get that tape? Is it plain enough to, that you can hear it? I would imagine. Carol, if we went back and reviewed the tapes, would they be? Hopefully. It's online. I hope you can understand what was said. But you guys have. Any, having them come in and do refresher is not a bad thing. I mean, they put no, on I'm not, I'm not um, that at all. those classes yeah. all the time, but it's not, you know, all that convenient for you guys. So yeah. having them come here and doing it. They it would be here for all of us to go through it. But I, I remember when the, I remember the, when that was cooking, that we instructed Rod to do that. But I don't, I can't tell you where it was If it, it wasn't was an emotion, you know, if it wasn't an emotion, it won't be reflected in the minutes. If it's just discussion, which is how we've been taught to do that. Well. We've been put on notice that we are being watched, as we should be, by the citizens of the community. Um, again, we will do the refresher course with the league, and um, I will try and go back and find those, find the tapes from those meetings, and, and see if I can see where things were, were done. Um, I am working to find a new city attorney. Rod is not interested in continuing. He will be, he is available to us for the time being until we do find a replacement. Um, I will have him draft a letter after I do some review, possibly letting this firm know this is where you can find taped recordings of the meetings. If we don't have a link on the minutes page, on the city's website, we need to put one there. Oh, for the video. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that that way they know that there is additional information available that the meetings are being taped and they have the ability to go back and review those. So. Well, it sounds like to me we either need to make more motions or something so that it's wrote down in the minutes also uh, of what action was yep. stated and how it was stated. So. Because well, we don't have a leg to stand on on anything if it ain't in minutes, I don't think. Well, and as far as any, um, but yeah, I just, like I said, normally we would have done this in executive session, but under the circumstances, I just felt it was appropriate. And I, I also agree with Troy, but I think our motion needs to be, have everything nailed down pretty much, just exactly the way I did with the, the building. That way, we've got it kind of. Second. 